Salam sejahtera. Anda sedang menonton Agenda Awal ini. Saya Sinti Eng dan topik untuk malam ini kita akan membincangkan pembelajaran digital. Jika dilihat Pelan Pembangunan Pendidikan Malaysia 2013 hingga 2025, salah satu sasarannya untuk meningkatkan prestasi sekolah ialah menerusi pembelajaran dan pengajaran digital atau lebih dikenali sebagai Digitalization of Education. Dan salah satu syarikat tempatan bernama Frog Asia kini membekalkan platform tersebut untuk uh, kepada sekolah di seluruh negara untuk mencapai matlamat ini. Dan wakilnya berada di sini dan uh, saya ingin meneruskan rancangan ini dalam bahasa Inggeris. I'd like to welcome uh, Lu Yeo, Executive Director of Frog Asia, uh, for being here to tell us more about your organization and also maybe you can share some of your insights about the education in Malaysia. Firstly, your company Frog Asia is the first company in the world to connect the education community of an entire nation through a single cloud-based learning platform. Can you just walk us through this idea, how did it start it and what does it do? Okay, so um, Cynthia, thank you so much for having me here today. Um, Frog Asia, we're an education company. We're passionate about transforming education through the internet. And um, we exist to make teaching and learning fun and exciting. And um, how we're doing this is in, in Malaysia is through the One Bistari Net project. So in, through the One Bistari Net project, um, 10,000 schools, all government schools in this country, uh, with a community of 10 million teachers, parents and students are connected on our Frog VLE. Um, and the project also encompasses uh, for, uh, 4G internet mm -hmm. in all schools. So um, the idea is that every single school has the Frog VLE, which is like a school intranet system. And VLE in a, a virtual learning environment. environment. Okay. So it's a learning platform. And think of it as a learning place where you can, first of all, put all school notices, mm -hmm. um, the school calendar, so the latest uh, events in school or whatever is happening in school can be up there. But on top of that, uh, teachers can also create lessons and then share that with their students. So you create a lesson once, an English lesson. You don't have to put it on the blackboard anymore. You can use that throughout. Like if you teach five classes, the same uh, maths class, then the same maths topic, you can just use that five times. And then uh, teachers can send assignments through our system. So um, then think about teachers having to take uh, stacks and stacks of exercise books home. Now they don't have to because they can just put it into a quiz and it auto marks for them. Uh, on top of that, uh, what it means when the whole platform is connected on the, uh, the whole country is connected on this platform is that if you're a teacher in, um, say, Bukit Nanas and you created a great English literature lesson, it can then be uploaded um, to the repository and all 10,000 schools can get the same lesson. So does it so, mean that uh, students and teachers and rural and urban areas can connect to the same kind of information that is provided on the platform. Yeah, exactly. So um, what happens is basically with the uh, with the platform, you're, we're bridging the educational divide, we're mm -hmm. bridging the digital divide. So yeah, that's exciting. Okay, let's talk a bit about the communication platform that is needed. You, s you mentioned uh, 4G yeah. um, that is being used, but what about um, school says, like for example, in rural areas who do not have a strong communication infrastructure, how do you get to them and how would they be able to access this platform? Actually, uh, as part of the project, so all schools in the country are connected through this high-speed internet. That was part of the project. Okay. So only in really rural areas where there's no infrastructure yet, um, and uh, most of that in, in the jungles, they're still using satellite technology, but mm -hmm. that will change over time as infrastructure is being built. Um, but yet with they they still have access to the platform so if they are you, you know they come out of the schools and they're in areas where they have connectivity then they can still access the same information and how long has this project been implemented mm -hmm. so it started um in early 2012 and um yeah so almost three years yeah how has it been the uh, how has the adaptation been has it been a su success rate and how is how has it been for you so i think um you know we started off by training um, MOE trainers and we also trained schools uh, how to use the system and now I think um, most of the schools are on the platform they know it exists I mean first it was creating awareness and then training people how to use it and um, people are really excited I mean because schools are now connected on the platform we're now running pro uh, programs online um, for example we're connecting classes uh, and schools through our program called Frog Connected Classrooms mm -hmm. and what that is is um, 
it's an online, well, think about it as like an online seminar or webinar where we bring speakers in and schools just connect online and listen to career talks by pilots or uh, chefs. And uh, we also did an SPM series on it. So mm -hmm. we bring, uh, we had one Guru Chirmalang, which is uh, one of the best teachers in Sejara uh, history. And just by having that one teacher teach you know, thousands of students at the same time. That's the power of the internet and that's, that's what's exciting. Is that your vision of what education system should look like in the future? What is your, your, your um, idea of a 21st century classroom? Well, I think, you know, um, in a technology driven world, it's definitely technology related. Mm -hmm. Um, but, you know, don't think about a classroom with, you know, replacing books with just laptops because it doesn't work that way. Um, you do, in, in a technology-driven age, people have access to information. So, uh, you know, you Wikipedia something, you get all that information anyway. So kids nowadays need to learn how to process that information and, and apply it. And so I think what, uh, what learning, what 21st century learning is all about is being able to use the tools that are available to them mm -hmm. to not just uh, to critically assess what is out there and not just d um, download information but start to think about creating how yeah, they can start well? creating stuff yeah, with what they have. So. Okay. And how has this uh, been able to enhance students' learning? Have you been able to gauge the uh, perhaps uh, students' score in a particular subject through this Frog Asia VLE? I think, um, well, I think you know, people's scores depend again on delivery of teaching and their interest in learning. But um, what I can say is that definitely an, it, there's been an increase in interest in learning. Um, and just talking about scores, it just reminded me of a teacher in uh, SK Jalan Slango, which is a small school in PJ. Um, but you know, uh, this this school doesn't it doesn't do very well. Um, they're not very high performing, and the teachers uh, started using our game-based platform. And what was that really interesting is that, yeah, with games, um, you know, one night, I think about midnight, I got an email from the teacher, super excited because she said, um, this girl who, she, it was in her group C band, and she always has to write see me on, the, on her exercise book, now just scored uh, above 95% and even 100% in her quizzes, and that's mm -hmm. never happened before. And that's because she was excited about learning, because she found something that related to her that she could play a game and learn at the same time and she was motivated so I, I think I think the beauty of what it is, uh, yeah. technology in education is that it can bring so many different elements yeah. that traditional classrooms wouldn't have been able to provide previously yeah definitely okay I uh, have to take this discussion to a first commercial break but maybe when we come back we can talk about maybe some of the barriers to educational techn uh, education technology uh, implementing technology in education for example maybe having teachers who are used to the old ways of teaching to adapt into this new uh, method so maybe we can talk about that shortly uh, stay with us we'll come back Welcome back and joining me is uh, Ms. Lu Yeo, the Executive Director of Frog Asia. I'd like to talk a bit about educational technology adaptation. We have the device, we have the uh, platform, we have the bandwidth, internet connection, but how do you get, in, uh, get the buy-in of, for example, teachers to adapt to a new way of teaching? Was it a challenge for you when implementing this program? Yeah, definitely. I think anything new uh, can always come across as scary and, um, you know, just to quote Sir Ken Robinson, who's a uh, really famous educationalist, he says, um, the great problem with transformation is the tyranny of common sense. It's when people start thinking it can't be done any other way because it's done this way. And I feel that's you know, really relevant in the teaching industry. Things have changed with technology in all sorts of areas. All hospitals now are you know, decked with high-tech um, devices and uh, machines. But you look at a classroom and it looks the same. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, so I think um, the whole idea there is that I think teachers are not used to the fact that you can teach in another way. But at the same time, I think people, you know, transforming so transforming mindsets is is difficult. But you know, you shouldn't con we shouldn't concentrate about uh, on the change. You should concentrate on the benefits that it brings. And I think 
that's how you get across. Because it's not about, I think technology is not about um, the tool, but what you do with it. And so when um, teachers know that it's going to help them save time, save effort, uh, save money, then, then it starts making sense. I'll give you an example. I mean, earlier on I spoke about marking stacks and stacks of books. So if, you, if a teacher realizes that, OK, I need to use this technology to key in the questions, and maybe I've never done it before, but if I do it once, I don't have to spend hours and hours with different exercise books doing the same thing again and again, and I save so much more time, and I can spend that time planning my lessons, then it starts to make sense, That's and it's a benefit for them. And I'll give you another example. <coughs> We're really used to, in the office, coming in, um, logging into our computer, and then just using uh, you know all the facilities, uh, emails, booking. If you want to book a meeting room in your office, you'd use the booking calendar. You know such thing in schools. And what teachers normally do is they have to walk all the way to the school office, and sometimes it's blocks and blocks away, and then to find that the slot has been taken out. And sometimes, because they really want to use, say, the school hall or the school projector, they, this really happens. They liquid paper somebody else's name and put, put their name on top of it so that they can get the slot. And that's like, you know, really, it's difficult. So bring in a booking calendar in our uh, virtual learning platform. And what people can do is from the luxury of home, they can decide, oh, in two weeks' time, I want to use the hall, I want to use the projector, and book it in. And then nobody else can liquid paper your name. And so then it starts making How sense How has the adaptation again. been? Has that been, um, has that been slow? Or what can you do to push them to use this technology that they have? I think um, so the teachers who are on board are really excited and I think that's because they've seen the change. Mm -hmm. So of course in the beginning it's always slow because um, you know people are not sure what they're doing but we've had early adopters that have really run with it um, and teachers who are you know who's, who've seen the benefits and I'll just name people like Juan Roaima from SMK Tamantase. Um, she's a real advocate and she's writing tutorials and sharing them online and putting videos up to teach other teachers mm -hmm. uh, how to use it. So when when they find that purpose, they start sharing it with their friends and that's how people start adopting it because you trust somebody else who's in your shoes. Um, and you know, especially for the teachers in schools that don't really have opportunities. And for example, uh, Mrs. Sinanti from SK, uh, J SJKT Ladang Butte. So it's a Tamil school in the estates, and you know they didn't, they don't really have that many opportunities because they're in the estate. But having technology come into their schools, they realized that um, they joined our online competition called Word Mania earlier this year, and that was a competition. Uh, a spelling competition and their English wasn't very good they only had 26 students in the school but they realized that it was an opportunity for them to shine so they got all their kids together parents supported it mm -hmm. and they used that thing they they used the competition as a way to inc improve their English in school and they won third place um, in the primary school category because of the de de determination and that platform um, so in that competition alone we saw over 2,000 schools participate so when we put something exciting out there that 20% of the schools, yeah, earlier this year. So, I mean, you're talking about adoption, okay. you know, that's, yeah, that's where we're seeing. You know, while there is uh, so much merits from programs like this, um, I'm just going to give you an example. For um, There is this One Child, One Laptop program. Mm -hmm. It was uh, started by this um, professor from MIT, and it was hailed as a, as a revolutionary idea, and it actually became a worldwide uh, sensation in the education uh, fraternity. But it failed after a while, partly because of low distribution, and um, uh, there was uh, no maintenance in terms of the IT uh, facilities, just some of the example. So I guess when you have a program such as this, the, the question that people will ask is, what about sustainability? Yeah. How do you sustain the program? How do you get teachers to go on uh, using it and to to create lessons continuously on the platform and also to get the uh, students to join in. I'm, I'm sure it's easier to get students, but probably, you know, you, I'm yeah. sure you understand what I'm saying. So how do you get this program to be sustainable in the long run? I think that's, that's a great question and people always say that. I think, you know, people have this mentality sometimes that if you just put a laptop there and you give someone uh, the infrastructure, it will, ha it will you know, things will magically happen. Things don't magically happen. That the device is, um, you know, a gateway into information and knowledge. But like you said earlier, it's not just a device. You've got when you have a device, you need connectivity to the internet. Um, on top of that, you need content, and you need a platform yeah. um, in which you get all this content. So. I think at the end of the day as well, it's also empowering and equipping the teachers because the 
device, the technology is not going to teach you. It's still the role of the teacher is really crucial. And for us, we see that as a our role as also uh, it's really important for us to inspire teachers and to equip teachers and to empower teachers. Um, and yeah, to get them to get it. Once once they get it and once they realize that it's important. Um, and look. Everybody wants to make sure that their teaching is the best. They, I mean, they're a teacher for a reason, and teachers want to make lessons better. It's just that they're bogged down with so many things. They teach one classroom has 40 students, and they teach multiple classes. Like you say, the stack of stacks of work to do. There's so much admin in schools. Mm -hmm. So you remove all of that with technology, then they have more time uh, to do what they do best, which is teaching. And that's where Frog Asia comes in yeah, to make their life easier so they can concentrate on what they do best, exactly. which is teaching. OK, I have to go for another commercial break. But when we come back, we're going to talk about an exciting event that's happening on, in November. I'll let uh, Lou talk about it later on. We'll go for a short break. Stay with us. Welcome back. I'm with Lu Yeo. She's the executive director of Frog Asia. Earlier, we were talking about uh, adaptation of educational technology. And I understand there's an exciting conference coming up in November called the Lips of Knowledge. Tell us more about it. Who's going to be there? Yes, so Lips of Knowledge is a platform for us to inspire people, um, bring in best speakers to talk about um, education and just inspire teachers and parents and students about you know what's happening in the world and what they can do with their hands to make a difference. Um, so this conference uh, is aimed at teachers and parents and what we have three sections. We've got uh, keynote speakers, we've got workshops and we've got exhibitions. And the whole idea is to showcase what's been happening um, in Malaysia and one Bistari Net. So the exhibitions will show you, uh, we'll have teachers and students talking about what they've been doing. Mm -hmm. You'll see a future classroom um, that actually is already in SMK Puchong. Um, and uh, just what, how, this, uh, how the teachers and students are use, utilizing that. Um, you'll see what great content we have on our platforms uh, and meet the content providers. But um, even more exciting is that we've got four main stage speakers, um, Dr. Alice Wilder, who works in uh, for Cartoon Network, and Nick Jr., mm -hmm. and Amazon Kids, and talking about um, just how you can reach students where they're at and their interests and hobbies to make them lifelong learners. Um, and then we have Alistair Smith talking about world-class learning. We have Julia Eminen, uh, who's gonna, who is the founder of Sport for Freedom, is going to talk about her passion about um, the injustice of human trafficking and what you can do to make a difference. And then locally, uh, really exciting, we have uh, Encik Jawal Anak Bunyao from SK Ulu Lubai. And he's a teacher, that, a headmaster that's transformed his school uh, in rural Sarawak. And, um, Basically, his school, the, the students didn't use to speak English, and he's managed to put in um, lots of different things, and now they're fluent. So it's going to be really exciting to hear. It's like an exciting lineup happening. that you have there. Yeah. When is this going to happen, and where is it at? It is on the 27th of November at the Majestic KL. So 8 to 5 p.m., everyone's invited. That's great. Um, I have to ask you this question. As a young person, very young person, leading to change the education, um, to transform education in this country. What concerns you most about the state of education in Malaysia and what do you hope to change? I think um, what concerns me, I, I went to um, SMK Asunta for my secondary school and that's an amazing school in PJ. Um, I had loads of opportunities, I had great teachers and I had a really, really good time. But, um, you know, I think education inequality mm -hmm. uh, is it happens in this country and when you're out of the cities um, in the rural areas the, you don't have uh, really good teachers and you know it's difficult so um, I think that you know by bridging the only way to bridge the educational divide is to bridge the digital divide if you can't get you're not going to be able to get train up loads and loads of teachers uh, fast enough to get them to every single school and there are 10,000 in this country. So um, the, by deploying technology, people can then um, access great knowledge um, 
through a platform. And, and it's not just getting great content, which is one thing um, that we advocate, but also being able to connect means that you can have a great teacher like I was talking about before um, on one Google Hangout session and thousands and thousands of kids can be learning. So um, yeah, that's, yeah. How do you view the future of classroom? Because earlier you mentioned that yeah. uh, somewhere at school in PG, yeah. that is the uh, example of a future classroom. What, what is it? Well, okay, so first of all, um, you've got to think about the teacher as a facilitator. Um, and that collaboration happens in class. So earlier on I spoke about the fact that you know, information is really easily available online now. So if you want to know about Shakespeare, you can just go online and you'll find out everything about him. So it's not so much about who he is, but about, you know, um, the writings of Shakespeare. How does that influence people's, uh, you know, writing and, and uh, you know, what's, what's the value of poetry and things like that. You can, and um, collaboration between kids so that the the, the tables in the classroom are circular, uh, semi-circular, so they, so they kind of encourage students to sit around each other, so you've got chairs on either side. Okay. And um, so kids can be collaborating in real time um, and using computers when they need to to get the information and then start discussing and putting presentations together. Um, in this classroom, <coughs> at the back of the classroom, uh, there's a punching bag. Now, okay, in SMK Puchong especially, it is a, um, it's a school where gangsterism is rampant and there's a lot of violence. And so the teachers there uh, decided to put this punching bag to teach the kids that if you're angry and you know um, you need to let it out on something, then you punch the punching bag. But as you do that, um, you learn self-control. And I think that's great because you know you you understand that it's not just about the academics. It's also about um, someone's social and spiritual life and and um, building a holistic child. So uh, yeah, it caters to everything. And it obviously has technology embedded within it. Sounds great. And I think you can learn more about this at the Lips of Knowledge Conference. Again, it's happening on November 27th at Majestic Hotel yeah. in KL. OK. Well, all the best to you, Lou, okay. and all the best to Frog Asia. Uh, itu sahaja masa yang kita ada untuk agenda awal ini malam ini dan jika anda ada sebarang cadangan atau pandangan sila hantarkan ke Facebook Astro Awani atau boleh tweet kami di at 501 Awani. Sekian sahaja agenda awal ini. Saya Sinti Eng. Salam sejahtera dan selamat malam.